before the video, if you are a person in North Texas and you're interested in being a model for a photo shoot, let me know. I've had some models, but I need more. I'm building my photography website for my professional website. I need as many models as possible. It can be a number of different kinds of shoots. I've done gym shoots. I've done nature shoots. I've done uh, all kinds of lighting. It can be any kind of shoot that you desire, but if you are a person in North Texas and I know you a little bit, know you uh, very well, or don't know you at all, just let me know. I'd greatly appreciate any help from uh, anybody who's interested in being a model. Now onto the video. I have this image in my mind of this uh, Japanese man. Uh, some point, I would say within the past three to 400 years, um, laying on a kind of like a floor cot, a floor sleeping area in an old style Japanese house with, uh, you know, paper um, slidings uh, for walls and wearing a kimono, laying on his back on this sleeping cot. I'm kind of looking down at him and there's a woman next to him and uh, he has his hands behind his head like this and he's gazing up at the ceiling of this, of this house. And while he looks completely different, Japanese, um, seemingly in Japan, um, there's, I, I know it's me and I, I remember in a strange way, but he's contemplating the vastness of the universe as he's looking up at the roof of uh, this old style Japanese house. And he, I, I get the sensation that he's a samurai of some sort, not a, not a well-known one, uh, not a wealthy one, but just a samurai. You're an average samurai. And uh, he's looking at the, the design of the wood or the kind of the molding of the wood on the ceiling and thinking about all the different stars that are out there, how big this universe is, what other things are out there. Not in the same terms of galaxies like we would understand or star systems, but within himself, he's, he's contemplating the vastness of the universe. And this strange sort of memory kind of, um, it clicks for me in a big way because when I first looked up the definitions of all the different religions, I, I was about seven years old. Um, and I, it was dial up back then. It was uh, one of those big monitors, those huge monitors that we used to have. And I looked it up on the internet and there was that dial up terrible noise that it used to make. And I remember going to this website and there was like blue sky background, clouds, it was bright. And then it had a definition of every religion. And I remember reading them, reading them all and sticking on Buddhism and reading Buddhism and talking about ending suffering. And I remember looking up sitting back in the sh computer chair, looking up at the ceiling and seeing all the different white, it was a white ceiling, uh, all the white paint splotches and thinking about how many galaxies there were out there and how small we are compared to the vastness and how, how other life forms are probably out there. And uh, I, I don't know how that big seven I knew about, I guess at seven, you kind of know that there's that there's more galaxies in the Milky Way, I, I assume. Um, but I remember while having this contemplation, thinking about Buddhism, and that really hitting home for me in, a, in, a, in an old memory kind of way. Like there was something about my soul that I was like, Buddhism clicks. And that's the first one I started to study. Um, but I didn't kind of gain my brain didn't make all the synaptic connections until, you know, fairly recently to have this memory of this Japanese man that I was, who was me, both, um, of having that old memory of, of a former life, uh, of a former birth that I had. Um, and uh, a lot of things didn't really click 
around that particular birth until recently as well. How I bow before the Divine Mother. I bow in a very Japanese way, though I, I didn't copy it from anything. And usually you don't bow in this way to Kali, uh, um, to an Indi Indian uh, goddess. But, uh, and my meditation cushion and the idea of not, of fearing pain less than humiliation and you know my interest in buddhism um but you know I, all these things didn't click in my head until recently but they, they've all always kind of been there now do we carry past tendencies from our for, former lives into this one i think that we do but i think that it depends on the birth i think it depends on the nature of the birth that you're in and how connected to a past birth that you are there's probably a there's probably many tendencies that I have that are connected to former births, that I kind of habits formed in former, former births um, that haven't clicked in my head yet, haven't become a, a succinct um, old memory or realization about these memories. Uh, the, the soul itself, while we will always look different, we might have a different gender, and we might have wildly different personalities, different political views, different religious and spiritual views or lack thereof. All of these things change, but they're, they're all potentialities that kind of surround our soul in a very unique way. And through understanding these tendencies, through understanding these potentialities and through meditation and revelation of these memories, we can get a better picture of what is the essence of our soul? What is the nature of our soul? Because all the former birds, all the former, pe former people that we were, our soul was, our soul, who we really are, was in them. And for whatever reason, these tendencies came out in this or that fashion. I think that the obsession over past lives, um, it's kind of a Victorian in a way because there's not an obsession over past lives. In India, the way that it is in kind of like New Age in the United States, um, because there, there are so many. And our soul, we should, we should touch our soul. We should become one with our soul rather than any kind of allegiances or any kind of people that we've been in the past. They all matter. They've all been recorded by our soul. They've all been recorded by our uniqueness. And that uniqueness perpetuates. Anything that you are right now, that, that can only manifest with the soul that you are. And every soul is slightly different. Overall, you know, you can think of light, um, just light kind of reflecting all col colors, but at the same time, we experience all the colors um, because they're reflected back at our eye, in a way, instead of the colors being soaked up. Um, I guess what I'm trying to say is that, in a way, while every soul might be a different part of the same light that we are all going to join with once more, they are a different, f slightly different frequency, a slightly different variation, a slightly different manifestation of that light in a way that we can view across time. And then once total reunification happens, once enlightenment, moksha, whatever you wanna call it, complete realization of our innate, innate godness, and we merge with the source once more, all of that is preserved. Don't think that you will be lost. And don't think that your soul is just the same as every other soul. It's all a different part of the same whole. That we're working back to but you're you're unique you are special and you are significant i think that what has allowed me to have certain realizations and strangely they come sometimes during meditation but that's that's usually not how it happens usually meditation helps your brain function better and your you touch your soul in a way that these memories get unlocked in a strange way. Like the memories were left in your brain all along and you reaching greater spiritual depth unlocks them. 
Now, I'm sure there's plenty of people out there, and maybe even me, while I'm sure about my, mem my past life memories, doesn't mean I'm correct. Could be wrong. And there's people that conjure up all kinds of um, fantasies in their head of being somebody great in the past, Napoleon or Caesar. It's usually somebody very famous for some reason. All of the past life little glimpses that I've had, they weren't anybody special. They were average people. Um, and I'm okay with that. Uh, don't, don't try to make this birth great by aligning, you know, conjuring up a fantasy of aligning former births with, you know, quote unquote, great people. Who we view as great is very cultural and is very set in a time in a way or a sequence of centuries, decades. But when I do, when I meditate, what I try to do, if, you know, if I'm saying my mantra mentally while I'm breathing, you know, out for four or five seconds and four or five seconds and holding for two in between, um, while I'm doing that and saying my mantra with, you know, one word with out breath, one word with in breath, another word with just one word per breath. Sometimes sentences can, can work, but I find that one word is, is works the best for me. While I'm doing the breathing and the, and the mantra, I will also be stepping back. So when I'm, when I'm meditating like this, I will feel like I'm stepping back physically, but not visualizing it and not with my legs and not even necessarily with my eyes, but more of a feeling of stepping back of hunters here and stepping back into subtler aspects of the mind, stepping back into consciousness and trying to step back and hold the step back away from the mind, away from kind of even the breathing and the body and the, even the mantra itself, but stepping back into the watcher, into the soul, into who I really am. And I've gotten, I've, I've gotten very successful at, that's a good sentence, at why, just setting my body on auto pilot when it comes to mantra and breathing and watching from behind myself and really we're stepping back into the into the brain but also into the soul stepping back away from the mind and the body's activities and viewing myself and I would suggest that you try to do this in your meditations when you're meditating if you're wondering how to remember past lives there's there's all kinds of stuff on the internet to help you kind of do that but it's a lot of visualization I find that I find that fantasies can be conjured sometimes it's not a bad thing all the time but you know but when you meditate one thing that'll help you unlock certain aspects of your deeper self of your soul try to identify and bring yourself back into the watcher while you're meditating meditate for at least 10 minutes I usually meditate for 15 minutes sessions but Try to identify with the watcher. Step back into the watcher. Step back into your soul. And you might get a better sense of what the nature of that soul is, your soul. And what is its uniqueness past, you know, the birth that we are right now, past the person we are right now, past the personality traits we have right now, past the history and the memories and the trauma that we have right now. What is the essence of the soul? Because the soul can't be, can't be traumatized. The soul can't be hurt. The soul can't be wet, can't be hot. The soul can't be uncomfortable, it can't be insecure. And in those moments when you're able to feel your soul, you'll find that a lot of things become more clear. At any rate, I hope this was interesting. I hope this was useful. If you like this video at all, like, uh, like, there, like down there in the comment section and leave a comment. I try to get to all comments and uh, Anybody that's polite, I try to get back to you. And feel free to share this wherever you like. At any rate, I hope this was helpful. And most importantly, I hope all of you have a wonderful day.